In an industry where we're constantly troubleshooting and trying to figure things out, did you know that you can actually get money from the government to help cover those costs? What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool back here again for Practical Machinist. And today on Shop Talk, we're gonna be going through exactly that scenario. But before we do, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so today on Shop Talk, as promised, we're going to be diving into something that you may not be aware of, but something that can be extremely beneficial to your company. Um, I like to preface this with the fact that I am not a tax lawyer. <laughs> I don't even play one on TV. This is not financial advice, but this is just to make you aware of some programs that may be available in your area that are worth checking out. As well, this is going to kind of be focused on US and Canada. I don't know how these systems work in other countries, but especially if you're in Western manufacturing, I imagine your country or where you live probably has something similar, so it's worth checking out. So today, the topic is RNE or SRED programs. In the US, this is called RNE, which stands for Research and Experimentation. In Canada, it's called SRED, S R E D, which stands for Scientific Research and Develop Experimental Development. It's a real tongue twister. So to backtrack a little bit, let's talk about this hypothetical situation. Let's say your shop is trying to make a job work. Um, you took on this job and now you got it, you're stuck dealing with it. Let's say that you have some long steel rails, let's call them 12 feet, 10 feet, whatever it is, that you have to machine. And there's a lot of material you have to take out of them. Let's say there's also a brass rail that has to go onto it. That brass rail also has a lot of material removed from it, it's very long and those two things need to fit together in the final assembly. Now, for any of you guys who have done, especially long things out of steel, or brass for that matter, that you take a lot of material away, you'll know if it's not some kind of stress relieved stuff, which you know, even then when it's stress relieved, it just means it's better, it doesn't mean there's no stress. If you take a lot of material out of one side or one portion or whatever of a long steel profile, you're gonna get warpage. You're gonna get it, you know, I've seen bars completely banana, where it can go up, you know, three inches at each end. That's an extreme example, but, you know, if you need to have something flat because of the profile and you're taking a lot of material away, you can get twisting, you can get bending, you can get bowing, very, very common. So let's say you do your steel rail, it's coming out bowed. Then you go to do the brass rail that has to fit on top nice and snug, you're getting a twist. Very common scenario, difficult to deal with. So now, you know what, like I said, you're in this job, you don't really have an option to just go to the customer and say, hey, we can't do this. So now, you start experimenting. So you start looking up, you know, hey, listen, I'm gonna go look on the computer, I'm gonna go start researching on the internet, seeing if anybody else has a scenario. You're not finding a lot. You're finding maybe some suggestions, but you're not finding any kind of concrete, hey, if you want to do this, follow step one, follow step two, follow step three. So now you start experimenting. You say, all right, so for that steel rail, first of all, we're going to try milling half of it. We're gonna let it rest for a day or two days, and then we're gonna mill the rest of it. Now that doesn't work. Then you say, do you know what? Hey, we're gonna go try to get this heat treated and stress relieved. So you go, you send it out, you get it heat treated, you try machining it, doesn't work. All right, do you know what? Let's actually try heat treating it a little bit differently, because I read something that says this might work. You heat treat it differently, you're getting some results. So you try kind of building along that, maybe you use some new tooling, maybe you um, change up some of your tool path approaches, and all of a sudden, at the end of the day, you've got something that works. You've got your railing that works. And I'm using this example because this is literally a scenario that happened with us. We were doing hundreds of feet <laughs> of this railing, and we were into it, we wanted to do it, we had problems, and this was literally the um, process that we went through in order to make this job work. And at the end of the day, we had nice straight rails, uh, we ended up having to heat treat them. It was a combination of heat treat, stress relieve, letting them rest, and actually milling them from both sides. So you mill the top, mill the bottom, let it rest and relax, mill the rest of the profile after heat treat. So it ended up working, and that was fantastic. 
But the problem was at the end of that job, we looked at it and we were like, man, you know, we've, we allocated X number of hours to this job, but because of all the experiment experimentation we had to do to get through it, we're not hitting our rate per hour. In fact, you know, any of you guys who have dealt with <laughs> difficult scenarios like this will know sometimes if you get yourself in a, in a situation, you can actually end up losing money. Bad situation to be in. We weren't quite there, but you know, it was, it was not looking very good. If you figure out what works, here's the thing. It's good, you ship the parts, that's great. But none of that is free. If you're trying out heat treating, you're paying for it. If you're trying out uh, new tooling, you're buying that tooling. If you're trying out new machining approaches, you're paying your guys to do it and you're paying for the material and you're paying for the machine time. Like it just goes on and on and on. None of this stuff is free. And what you're doing may not seem overly important to you, but what you're doing is experimentation. You're actually doing research. And the governments, at least in Canada and the US, actually want you as a manufacturer to do this kind of stuff. Because somebody has to do it. You're not gonna be the only person to do this scenario. You're not the only person that's gonna deal with warpage. So the government actually wants to help pay for some of those costs in order to help you do this stuff. I mean, think of it from their perspective. We're trying to rebuild, not just we, we as the Western world are trying to reshore and rebuild Western manufacturing. If people don't know what they're doing, if people can't figure stuff out, that's gonna hinder that. The government wants to inject money into this in a way that makes sense to help you do your job so that you can go sell parts and contribute to the economy. So what you can do is you can take this whole process and go for either an R&E claim in the US or a shred claim in Canada. So in order to qualify for it, there are some things that you need to know. Um, in Canada, I'm gonna go through these examples just because this is the one I'm familiar with. You need to answer five questions. This is actually on the SRED thing to qualify this. So to figure out if the work you were doing lines up with this, you need to answer five questions. The first one is, is there a scientific or technological uncertainty that could not be removed by standard practice? So basically, did you try it the normal way, normal way is not working, and something is going wrong? That's the easiest way to, to understand that one. The second one question you have to answer is, was a hypothesis formulated specifically aimed at reducing that uncertainty? So basically what that's saying is, you, you're encountering a problem, the second point is, did you try to figure out something to solve specifically that question? Um, the specificity of it is what can be very important in these claims. If you you just say, part's not working, need part to work, that's not specific. But to go back to our earlier example, if you say, part is experiencing a lot of warpage due to stress in the material, and we're seeing an average deviation of, you know, one inch of twist end to end, or whatever it is, that's now a something that you can measure. And so your hypothesis is, we're going to heat treat at X, in order to reduce that. That's your hypothesis. My hypothesis is I'm gonna try heat treating. The third part that you have to answer is, was the procedure adopted consistent with the scientific method, including formulating, testing, and modifying the hypotheses? So in other words, you at least need to not just look like you were throwing everything at the wall and seeing what stuck. You have to basically come up with a experiment. So in our case, that experiment was, let's try heat, heat treating at whatever temperature for X number of time, bring the temperature down to a kneel and stress relief for this long. That's what we're going to try. And then you modify. So like I said, we tried that, that didn't work. Well, what if we try bringing it up to a lower temperature and have a longer cool off period? That's modifying the hypothesis. And you can do that. Like I said, we went through a lot of different options. So by modifying your hypothesis to figure out what's gonna work, that's okay. You don't need to be committed to one idea. You just need to go through them one by one. The fourth thing you have to answer is, did the process result in advancement? I've never tried to do a claim on something that didn't work. To me, it sounds like this says, you have to have some level of success. Notice that it says advancement. It doesn't say, did you achieve your goal? Was it better? Is kind of what it's asking there. Better is good enough for one of these claims. And the fifth one you have to answer is, was a detailed record of the hypotheses tested and results kept as the work progressed? So in other words, you gotta do your homework. 
for this kind of stuff, guys, you have to do your homework. Um, you need to keep your QA records. You need to keep records of what you did. You need to keep photo documentation. Basically, as soon as you think you may be in some kind of RE claim or SRED claim, you want as much information written down as possible. It is impossible to have too much information. It is very possible to have not enough information to have a claim. And that can be a very big financial difference on your job based on how much information you keep track of. So it's very worth keeping photos, videos, um, your QA logs, your programs, receipts of what you did, very, very important, the time you spent, your costs, because those are the things you can claim. If you answer all those questions, you may be eligible. And again, this is the Canadian SRED. I did not find the questions you have to answer for the r &E, but I imagine they're probably fairly similar. And in the case that you answer yes or all these questions properly, you may be able to claim. And what you claim are your expenses. So if I spent you know, X on all the testing, you generally don't get 100% of it back, but I might get 40% or I might get 50% or you might get 70% but there's no penalty for doing it. As far as I know, there's no cost to apply. So it's always worth trying. Um, you know, in, in a best case scenario, you could take a job that was about to lose you a lot of money and at least make it not so painful. And in some scenarios, let's say you worked hard, you spent a lot of money and you got this job out, you may be able to turn an okay job into a pretty good job because you figured it out. Yeah, you spent some money, but now the next five times you do this job, you know exactly what you have to do. And the government helped pay for that. So basically they paid for your R&E. Now you can go and redo this job as many times as you want, 10 times as quickly as you were doing it previously, let's say, and the government paid for all your experimentation. It's a great program. It's a fantastic program. The reason I bring this up is because it's very important that you know about it. I feel like the biggest barrier to entry for people not using these programs is that people don't know about them. Or they think, man, there's no way we would qualify for that. For any of you guys who are familiar with what we do here at Lakewood Machine and Tool, we're not aerospace, we're not welding together different metals for you know crazy going to the moon applications. Uh, we don't do anything particularly crazy. And we have had multiple of these things go through. So you don't need to be literally bending the will of science <laughs> to your whim in order to get something out of this. You know, you can just be solving problems. It's all about identifying problems, solving them, documenting it, and then going and putting one of these things through. So in any case, guys, I'd like to know in the comments below, have you ever done one of these before where you're from? Um, does your country, if you're not the US or Canada, do you guys have a program like this? Um, have you worked somewhere with one of these claims? Do you have any advice for people trying to do it? I think it's really, really important. And you know, the first step is knowing about it. So please, please, please look into these programs because these are the kind of things that are gonna help rebuild and continue to build uh, Western manufacturing. So it's very, very important. Thank you very much for watching guys. As always, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Thanks again for watching. You take care.